So you're a quantitative uh, FX volatility trader. Do you want to tell us a little how you got into this area? Sure. I've, I've been uh, working in the FX industry for around 10 years, uh, primarily looking at spot, but also more recently mm -hmm. looking at volatility as well. Um, and I think a lot of it is in looking at the market and trying to find out ways you can trade it systematically. I think option space in particular has been something which people have traded more on a discretionary basis, uh -huh. but more and more in recent years, there's opportunities to do it from a systematic basis as well. So. Wow. And at this conference, you're going to talk about trading strategies and FX volatility. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk about? Sure. I think in terms of what I'm going to talk about, it's mainly going to be looking at trading the most liquid crosses in uh, G10 space. Uh -huh and primarily looking at trading the front end from a systematic perspective. Uh, looking at, for example, how delta hedging impacts the P&L versus not delta hedging. Uh -huh. And also trying to find out trading opportunities in the front end as well. So hopefully it'll be of interest for, for people at the, uh, the talks. I think so. What data inputs do you use for that kind of trading? Is it just the market data or do you look at macroeconomic events as well? Well, most of, the, most of the data I look at is, is market data, but a lot of the rationale as to mm -hmm. why these types of strategies work are because of macroeconomic mm -hmm. events. Uh, the idea being that in the front end, you have a significant risk premium, for example, around events mm -hmm. like non-farm payrolls, uh, which don't actually translate into, into realized volatility. So the idea of selling the front end is mainly to monetize those. Uh, Excuse events. me, you said non-farm payrolls does not translate into realized volatility? Usually the market goes crazy. Well, it does, the, it does. But that's not volatility? That is volatility, but implied volatility before the event is marked up even further. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. So, yeah, you're right, there is a lot of realized <laughs> volatility, but the, the markup from the implied is actually too much for that, so. Oh, it's overpriced, it's the volatility overpriced. is overpriced. So typically, for example, if you look at Euro dollar overnight uh, uh, vol, it tends to be about four or five vol points more before payrolls, uh -huh. but that doesn't actually translate into four to five vol points of extra oh. realized volatility over the event. So do you trade the options as well as the outrights? Yeah, yes, there. so oh. the idea would be to monetize it through being short gamma, uh, but the difficulty is understanding how you actually hedge your risk around delta hedging, because if you don't delta hedge your risk, then you're exposed right. to very large uh, directional moves. It sounds like from what you say, there's a pretty good profit just by shorting the options if they're overpriced. There is, there is a good profit there, but there's always the caveat that uh, you might end up having an, a, a tail risk event. So, a tail risk event. So you, you can never actually put too much money into that type of strategy. It can only be a small part of your portfolio, yeah. unfortunately. So otherwise okay. I'd be a rich man. <laughs> otherwise you'd be a rich man, absolutely. So you've written a book on trading about what the ancients can teach us. Can you tell us something about that? Sure. Um, in terms of what the ancients can teach us, uh, they've actually did, done a lot of things that we think are new today. Uh -huh. For example, Talis was actually the first person to trade options, albeit on olive presses. Oh. Um, but it, but it, his objective was actually not to speculate. It was mainly to show that he could, uh, he could make money if he tried, essentially. So. What about his counterparty? The people he bought the options from, were they speculators? Well, they weren't speculators. They were actually olive growers. Oh, oh. So, uh, but uh, he ended up making money when he foretold a, a great harvest, and then he cashed in his options, so. Did he ever lose money? Well, that's the one trade that we have on, on sample, so oh. it's only one <laughs> that's point. That's the one that he wrote about. That's the only one that he wrote about. Yeah, so that's the only one we have on, on, uh, on, on sample, uh -huh. unfortunately. And you're a co-founder of the Thalesians. What are the Thalesians? Well, we're named after, after, after Thales. Thales. And um, basically, the, the objectives of our group is to, to run financial seminars to try and uh -huh. engender uh, education amongst uh, quant finance practitioners. But also, more recently, we've been doing consulting around quantitative trading and also uh, publishing research around quantitative trading. So we're slowly oh. expanding our, our reach. And some of the research you've published, for example, has been on the 4 p.m. currency fix, yes. how that affects the markets. So that's probably something that I wouldn't have been able to do when, in my uh, oh. previous roles in banks, but it's, it's just looking at the idea of understanding the risk for a market maker around that uh -huh. fix. So it's, uh, it's an interesting topic and very controversial at this point, but I hope I've I've yeah. added a bit of color through my, my research on that. Yeah, no, that's certainly an important event. We, we see that trading the markets. Yeah. Um, and you've also written a paper about beta in FX, what beta means across an FX basket. Yeah. How that, would you define beta? How would you define? Well, I think it, in terms of beta, the, the difficulty is there's no obvious beta. Like in uh -huh. fixed income markets, you can think of major indices as that. So the idea in FX would be to, to look at beta in terms of styles. 
like carry, like trend, uh -huh. like values. So, and actually, if you look at FX fund returns, a lot of it can actually be decomposed into trend and, and carry. So you would define beta relative to a fairly canonical strategy, that there are standard strategies that people run. You can't just be long the market. Yeah. You could run a standard strategy. Yeah, that's the idea. So you're long something like a standard strategy like carry or, or trend. So. Yeah. And you're also an amateur photographer. Yeah, I, yeah. See. I, I do enjoy photography, so I'm hoping to take a photo to put on the front cover of my book. Not of me, oh. obviously. But, <laughs> but what, would it, what would it be a photo of? I'm not sure yet. I think it has to be something uh, ancient, so I, I need to so think of that. So. Something ancient. Well, maybe you have to travel and do some research to find I something. I think so. Maybe go to Greece and have a look around. I think so. so. I think yeah. so. Well, I look forward to reading the book when it comes Thank out. Thank you. Thanks very much. Great. Thank you.